Hello everyone, this is Chris from Spoon Graphics, back with another video tutorial for Adobe Illustrator. I've been admiring the lettering work on vintage insurance maps lately, so much so that I printed up a large 1863 map of New York to decorate our kitchen. These old documents were originally drawn up by hand by Master Penman, who illustrated the title page with ornate lettering and detailed embellishments. You can find some great examples by the Sanborn Map Company on Google Images and Pinterest. Painstakingly illustrating artwork like this by hand is a dying art form that would have taken years of training to become a master of penmanship, but we can create similar text effects with the help of digital fonts and modifications in Adobe Illustrator. Follow along with this Illustrator tutorial to create a vintage text effect with decorative details. We'll take inspiration from the authentic examples with fine line work, drop shadow effects and warped text layouts. Unless you're talented enough to hand draw vintage lettering from scratch, we're going to need a font that captures the aesthetics of late 19th to early 20th century textiles. There are many vintage fonts out there, but not many have been expertly crafted by a talented lettering artist who lives and breathes the vintage aesthetic. I recently picked up the vintage font bundle by Tobias Saul, whose inspirational vintage logos and type designs have been featured many times in showcases on Spoon Graphics. The bundle contains six unique typefaces that are all packed full of features such as alternate characters, ornamental graphics and even ready-made logo templates. It's currently on offer with 70% off, but I've teamed up with Heritage Type Co to offer Spoon Graphics subscribers an extra 10% discount code. Use the code Spoon Graphics during checkout to secure the best price around. I'll be using the font named Old Alfie in this tutorial, then to finish off the design, I'll show you how you can quickly add ornate flourishes with the help of one of the ready-made set of frame graphics in the pack. So open up Adobe Illustrator and create a new document to begin. To make it easier to see both black and white elements, I'm going to build my design in the empty space around the artboard. Use the type tool to set out your chosen wording. The old Alfie typeface from the vintage font bundle has some lovely embellishments built right into its design. The space between New and York is a little too large in my example. To reduce it, place the cursor between the words, then use the Alt and Left cursor key to decrease the kerning value. The live text first needs converting to shapes in order to customise it with Illustrator's tools. Right click and choose Create Outlines. Give this text a white fill. Go to Object Path and Offset Path. Turn on the preview, then find a value that adds a thin outline around the text. 5 pixels works for the scale of my artwork. Click the black swatch to fill this outline text shape. Illustrator automatically groups offset paths with the original graphic. Click elsewhere to deselect, then click the whole text group again. Right click and choose ungroup. Click elsewhere to deselect everything again, then hold the shift key and select all the white letters. Go to Object, Path and Offset Path again, this time find a negative value that creates shapes within the outline of the letters. Clear the white fill and add a black stroke to these inner shapes. Bump up the stroke size to two points in the stroke panel. While these shapes are all selected, go to Object, Compound Path and Make, which will prepare them for an upcoming step. Select the line tool, then hold shift and draw a straight line underneath the main text. Give it a weight of 3 points. Draw another line, or alt and drag this path with the move tool to create a copy at the top of the text. Reduce this line's stroke weight to 0.75 points. Hold shift and select both lines, then go to object, blend and make. Zoom in so you can see the letters up close, then head back to object, blend and blend options. Set the spacing to specified steps, then with the preview enabled, alter the number to create a series of tightly spaced lines. This blend element needs converting to regular shapes. Go to Objects and Expand, which will first convert the blend effect to a series of strokes. Expand again, which will then convert the strokes into rectangular shapes. Right click and choose Ungroup, then go to Objects Compound Path and Make. The step of creating a compound path of both these lines and the text shapes just makes sure they play nicely when trimmed with the pathfinder. We need to make a copy of the inner text shapes, so zoom right in and carefully click one of the outlines to select them all. Go to edit and copy, then edit and paste in front. Shift and click the lines to add them to the selection. 
Then in the Pathfinder panel, choose Intersect. The inner lines shapes will still be copied in the clipboard, so add another set with the Edit and Paste in Front menu. Switch the stroke for a fill, then copy and paste another set of black shapes. Nudge this new copy down and right with the keyboard cursor keys. Hold Shift and add the previously created black shapes to the selection. Then click the Subtract button in the Pathfinder panel to create an inner shadow effect. Make a selection of all the black outline shapes by holding Shift and carefully selecting them all. Go to Object and Group to make it easier to select them in one click. This might affect the stacking order, so right click and choose Arrange Center Back. Copy these elements, then choose Paste in Back. Nudge these shapes down and right, but hold Shift while doing so to nudge them 10 pixels at a time. Shift and click the original outlines to add them to the selection, then go to Object, Blend and Make. Head straight back to the Blend options again and set it up with specified steps. This time use a high value that makes it look like a smooth transition between the two shapes. Go to Object and Expand to convert this blend into hundreds of individual shapes laid on top of each other. Merge them all into one outline using the Pathfinder's Unite button. Zoom out then use the Line tool to draw a 45 degree diagonal line that is long enough to cover the text. Set the stroke to two points, then position another diagonal line on the other side of the text. Select both shapes and create a blend. Under the Blend options, set up the steps to create a series of evenly spaced lines. Follow the procedure of converting this blend element by going to Objects and Expand twice, Ungroup, then create a compound path. This time we need a copy of the text outlines, so zoom in and carefully select it between the gaps in the diagonal lines. Copy and paste in front. Add the diagonal lines to the selection, then click Intersect in the Pathfinder panel. Nudge these trimmed lines down and right to extend the drop shadow with a hatch shading effect similar to the techniques drawn by hand on the original pieces. Right click and choose Arrange and Centre Back so the diagonal lines don't overlap the text. Draw a selection around everything with the Move tool, then go to Object, Envelope, Distort, Make with Warp. Choose Rise from the drop down and configure the bend to around 20%. Expand to permanently apply this envelope distort effect. That's the main text effect portion of the tutorial complete, but if you went ahead and purchased the vintage font bundle to follow along with the same old Alfie font, I wanted to show you how you could make use of the ready-made graphics to further decorate your vintage text. Open up the frames document under the ornaments and elements section. Here you'll find loads of detailed graphics that would take ages to draw manually but you might be able to find one that happens to suit the length of your wording. Copy and paste one into your working document. We need a different envelope distort value to match the ready-made frame, plus the hatch shading doesn't work well, so a quick undo reverts those last two steps. Right-click the frame and choose Ungroup. As nice as they are, I didn't want the flower graphics, so they were deleted. Select all the parts that make up the main text effect and make a group so it can be easily selected with one click. Then scale and position the text within the frame. Right click and choose Arrange, Bring to Front. Go to Object, Envelope, Distort, Make with Warp and configure a new rise effect that matches the angles of the frame layout. 30 degrees seems to work. Expand this envelope distortion to convert the text back into editable shapes. Select the main portion of the frame and change the fill to black. Click the remaining elements and fill those black too. The circular element is a trickier piece that overlaps other elements. Bring this item to the front using the Arrange menu so it sits on top of the text. Give these lighter yellow areas a white fill or use the Shape Builder tool to remove them completely by selecting everything and then clicking while holding the Alt key. Be warned though, this soon starts getting CPU intensive because of the thousands of points that make up the detailed paths within the text outline. Let's create another similar text effect for the date to fit inside the circle. Create a text element for 1895 in the same old Alfie font, then convert it to outlines. Add an offset path to create a thin outline of one pixel, and give it a white fill. 
Deselect and reselect again to select the group, then right click and choose ungroup. You can now select each individual letter in order to add another offset path, this time a negative value to add some decorative shapes inside the text. Give these inner shapes a white fill. You can build up drop shadow effects by making copies of the main outline and nudging them to offset each one a little further. Alternating the fill between black and white adds a cool effect. Group all the elements that make up the text, then position it centrally within the circular element. Existing ornaments from the frame can be used to add decoration to this area. Ungroup the objects first, then copy and paste one of the graphics. Change the fill to white, then scale and position it into place. We can use the same technique of adding blended lines to decorate the text to customise the frame to help tie them together. Draw a short vertical line then make a duplicate of the other side of the text. Create a blend between them with tightly spaced lines. Alt and drag a copy of the blend over the horizontal bar within the frame. We want to save a set of blended lines for the curved part of the frame. Follow the procedure to convert the blend by expanding twice ungroup and create a compound path. Deselect the lines, then zoom in and select the bar shape. It might be necessary to ungroup to select just this particular item. Right click and choose Arrange, Bring to Front to place it on top of the lines. The bar shape has a reduced transparency, so bring the opacity back up to 100% in the transparency panel. Add the lines to the selection, then hit the intersect button in the pathfinder panel. Send the object to the bike using the Arrange menu so the lines don't overlap anything else. In order to add the lines to the curved area, we need to draw a path that follows the curvature. Use an ellipse that matches the size, then use the Direct Selection tool to delete the lowermost point to create a semicircle. Clear out any fill or stroke this path has, then select it along with the blend lines and go to Object, Blend, Replace Spline. Alter the blend options to space out the lines correctly by setting the orientation, then the number. Expand these shapes to apply the effect and convert to a compound path. Then rotate them to fill the curved bar area. Bring that curved bar shape to the top. Bump up the opacity. Then use the pathfinder panel to trim the lines to size. Send them to the bike so they don't overlap the other elements. Since we're making use of the resources in the Vintage Font Bundle, we might as well finish off the artwork with one of the included textures. Place texture number 4 into the document and send it to the back. Select everything, then shift and click the background image to remove it from the selection, then group all the main text objects. Set the blending mode to multiply at 90% opacity to allow the paper texture to begin showing through the artwork slightly. The final result is a detailed decorative vintage text effect inspired by the embellished title pages of old fire insurance maps. Using the ready-made font from Heritage Type gave us the authentic looking lettering to work with, which could then be customised with Illustrator's offset path and blend tools. Combining the text effect with one of the frame graphics really helps to enhance the vintage theme with loads of ornate flourishes. So if you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks for Adobe Illustrator, please give the video a like. Subscribe to my channel to stick around for more of my content and join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download my free design resources. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.